I'm here with Matt Zane from Society One, and we're going to talk a little bit about all the crazy shit that you have going on. Um, we've been speaking back and forth a lot recently uh, about, you know, the movie that you have, um, you know, the new music. You just, you have a lot of shit going on. Um, and a tour. You're going on yes. tour soon. Uh, yeah. So tell me a little bit about, you know, what it is that you're most excited about. Uh, 2023 is going to be a really big year for Society One. Um, but before we jump into that, I do want to ask, like, could you give a very basic description of what Society One is for our listeners? I am the lead vocalist for a band called Society One. We're actually going on our almost our 25th year of being around and touring on and off. And we're basically uh, an industrial metal slash rock band at times. And we've been known as one of the um, newer but premier shock rock bands uh, for the things that we got famous for back in the mid 2000s, uh, most notably the body suspensions that uh, we introduced. And I was the first frontman ever to suspend. And for those people out there that don't know what that is, it's having um, hooks pierce through your flesh in the back and then I would be pulled up in front of people and I would sing the set live in front of, of uh, an audience. And ultimately this uh, really came to the pinnacle in 2005 when I performed at the Download Festival in front of about uh, 80,000 people with bands like Slayer and Slipknot and System were all on that show as well. And we are on that main stage. And uh, since then, suspension has become a very not very popular, but a little more accepted and popular and out there and stuff. And I've also influenced people into getting into it, most notably Dave Navarro, who then brought it into Jane's Addiction and then ultimately got into suspension himself. And then from there, I actually became, I broke the world record for the longest body suspension uh, in Las Vegas in 2008. I hung for six hours with four hooks. Uh, I believe the record still stands for four hooks. And uh, that's basically what I um, am most known for, I think, out of all the things that I do, but that's only one aspect. How did you get into that? Prior to me getting into suspension, there was uh, basically a guy named Joey Strange uh, from 20 plus years ago that was a performance artist that was doing all the things that I was ultimately did and what Chris Angel did. He was the precursor to Chris Angel doing a lot of those stunts. He was the, Joey Strange was the first guy to suspend from a helicopter and be flown over the Hollywood sign. And then Chris Angel got into suspension from him. And then Chris Angel ended up getting the world record like five and a half hours suspending with eight hooks. And then I beat Chris Angel doing it with only four hooks and going six hours. Uh, so ultimately my introduction, it wasn't through Chris. It was through the guy that Chris and I both emulated. It was from a guy named Joey Strange. This guy was really, really wild back then. And I went out and I contacted him when I was thinking about ways that I could bring my band to that next level in terms of shock rock, because one of the big issues back then, and again, you're a bit young to probably remember this, but if all those people out there remember, there was a really big guy that was shot, was the God of shock rock back in the mid nineties named Marilyn Manson. And anybody that was skinny and had long black hair, unfortunately, regardless of how different you sounded or whatever you did, was ultimately just pigeonholed into being a rip off of Manson. And I was no exception. My first album in the 90s, Slacker Jesus, and my performances, I couldn't escape the comparisons. So when we came out with our bigger record, Exit Through Fear, on a bigger label, which is the 20th anniversary tour that we're doing coming up, I wanted to do something that even Manson wouldn't attempt, that nobody would ever compare us ever again. And I wanted to make like history in the rock world. And so knowing this guy, Joey Strange, and then talking to him about it and discussing if it was even gonna be possible, nobody knew because it had never been done before. I was just crazy enough to just give it a shot and give it a go. And it ended up becoming a really big part of our career and, and actually catapulting us to some pretty major frame, pr fame, primarily overseas, but ultimately, um, you know, really did well for us. And it's still doing well for us because it's so long ago now that when we post suspension videos, like on TikTok to Gen Z, uh, we literally get over a million views of people watching, still can't believe, not being able to believe what they're seeing. Because despite Jane's addiction, using suspension artists and other people getting into suspension, nobody has been able to do what I've done still in the, in the world of rock and roll. Right. Absolutely. But I do know that as far as shock rock goes, that's only one element to what society one, yes. um, you know, does. So like, 
yes, you have the suspension, but I think there's a lot more to your image and like what makes people very curious um, about Society One. So can you talk a little bit on that and how that kind of started? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, so you're unable to suspend every show, but I was still always very into the shock rock elements of rock and roll music. And this started back with my fascination with Jim Morrison. And again, this is even before my time, but if you really look into his career in The Doors, I mean, this is a guy that was on trial for possibly uh, uh, whipping his dong out during a concert. And uh, it was alleged, it was never proven and no photographs were ever produced of it. But nevertheless, he actually was on trial facing jail time prior to his death because of this. And then he also did other various things in a very like uh, basic rudimentary introduction level in terms of shock rock. He was the first guy to ever get arrested on stage. Uh, he'd fight with cops. I mean, there was, there was various things that happened. So I was very fascinated, you know, by, by what he did and um, his career. And then later I discovered somebody named Gigi Allen who, uh, if anybody, he's very unknown in the sense that he was very underground punk rocker. And the things that he did were so extreme that I don't believe anybody's ever gonna be able to top what he did. Uh, and a lot of the, the elements of his show, I kind of emulated to the furthest extent that I felt comfortable to really get a reaction out of the crowd to the same extent that maybe the suspensions did. Um, and so that's where the other half of my performance and my fascination with shock rock came from. So it was primarily like a mix between Jim Morrison and a guy named Gigi Allen, who I, I do mention in the movie that, that we're uh, shooting right now. But I mean, if you want to get more specific about in terms of the things that I did on stage, it's just that I wanted to put on a show that uh, a lot of people just never seen before. And so there was just certain things that we did. And again, to talk about them right now, just openly, I, I'd, I'd probably get a little too graphic for this interview, but uh, yeah, I just wanted to do something that was just unique and, and cause people just anger and confusion and excitement and lust all wrapped up into one, just like this total chaotic, just ball of insanity and, and, and just pure madness, you know, when you went to come see our shows and it happened more, more times than it didn't. And a lot of the things, you know, I feel that you do or have done um, previously would probably not fly so well these days. Is that true or am I totally wrong? Yeah, I think that if I, if, when, this tour that's coming up that kicks off in about 48 days, the 20th anniversary of the Exit to Fear tour, I think if we went out there with the exact show that you're referring to that you've seen, me post a lot about, I, I would be in jail within like a night or two. Uh, so yeah, I, we're on, we're going to be unable to bring that exact show back. Uh, and we're obviously not going to do a lot of that because of the political climate, the PC culture. Uh, it's just, it just can't happen. It would just be done before it even started. And I know that we have a lot of new fans and a lot of new faces out there. Like I mentioned, you know, we have over, you know, a million hits on some of these clips on TikTok. Uh, they they wouldn't even be able to get to experience any of it. And we don't want to like, we're not out there trying to make a statement uh, by going all the way and just getting thrown into jail after the, the first day, because, you know, we, we've already made those statements. We've already made history. We've already, we have the tapes to prove it. Like it's, it's out there. There's a movie being made about it now. Um, you know, so we're, we're looking to give more of a, a good recreation to the best that we can on this next tour of that experience without crossing over the line where we did, you know, back in the day, because we just know what would happen. I mean, it's not about, I mean, look, I, you, you say the wrong thing against establishment now online and you get banned from Twitter for words. So imagine if I was out there doing the things that I did now in the current climate. As far as like people being upset or liking or disliking, what we're finding is, is that a lot of younger ge generation, a lot of younger people like yourself, you know, really are enjoying it and are intrigued by it because it breaks the rules and it's not like anything they've ever seen before. The people that have the issue with it is a lot of our peers. A lot of our peers don't give us a lot of respect and have a lot of hate and a lot of uh, negative things to say about us because they don't believe that we've earned the right to stand next to all these other bands that were the big bands from our time because we didn't sell as many records. So believe it or not, it's like our, our peers that say, oh no, you, you shouldn't be included in this discussion and you shouldn't be doing what you do and there shouldn't be movies about you because who are you? you? You've never had a hit song, you've never had a hit record. And 
they have a, a good point in that sense. I, I don't try to argue that point, but my next point then is, is either to Gigi Allen. And again, you may not know who he is right now, but they are making a movie about him right now, a biopic. And then everybody's going to know who this guy is. And he sold less than I did. I sold like hundredfold in terms of concert sales and tickets and stuff versus, you know, what he did. So my argument's always just been as far as that's concerned, like you just, I don't care, you know, like, like, I've been here for over 25 years and I'm still going and I'm still doing stuff and I'm just finding a new audience now because of the, the social media that's out there available to me and I'm just going with it. And if the older people and the peers don't want to like me, fine. You know what? Then, then don't, I don't really care because you're busted. You're old, you're slow, you're decrepit, you're a dis- dinosaur and nobody gives a shit what you got to say anyways. So like, I rather go with all the young, energetic, people that are that are showing us the love and giving us the praise and, and and so on and so forth it's it's more exciting to me anyways and you're prettier to look at and i mean that as, as a whole you too of course but like you know like like everybody as a whole you know when i so again not to sound like a total asshole like if you're older and you dig the band and you're liking it then cool it's all i'm just saying for all those other people that are throwing all that hate it's like okay fine you know what i don't want to look at you anyways but i mean obviously not everybody feels that way about you you are touring soon with static x and fear factory so obviously some people do like you no, i love those guys i'm not saying they like really like me all that much but they tolerate me so so i i love them for tolerating me you know um yeah, I mean, uh, I have a lot of history with those guys, and uh, it's amazing to be able to tour with them. I have a tremendous amount of respect for them. Uh, I, I wish I could. I wish they had the same amount of respect for me because I respect them so highly. But you know, they tolerate me, so whatever. I think they think it's a, it's a, a interesting uh, social experiment uh, having me around still all these all these years later. I'm sure that you bring a lot to you know the the value of bringing people. Out to the shows because you know you do go viral um you do you know you have a really good social media presence um and you do hit pretty hard with the younger audience where I feel like you know I grew up with Static X yes I still listen to them obviously rest in peace um Wayne Static um I feel like you know you just don't really hear so much about them and or Fear Factory as much as you used to um mm-hmm. whereas you know you guys are a little bit different in the sense that you're still kind of making headlines. Am I right? Yeah. You know, they have a bigger fan base and they obviously sell more and they're the headliners for a reason. Uh, But as far as the younger fan base is concerned, yeah, we're absolutely uh, in a, in a different place than, than not only those bands, but a lot of other bands that are from our decade, you know, uh, so yeah, I, I believe that we we definitely bring in a younger energy and a younger people and a and a and a nice young attractive crowd, and uh, I'm just happy that we're able to offer that uh, to the tour. Um, you know, again, uh, it's just uh, something that I'm incredibly grateful for because it's it's I got to tell you it it makes life so exciting because man, it's, it's like, it's, it's like it was 20 years ago, all over again now. And, uh, when you meet these young people, uh, online and see them and see the comments and everything, and it's just, it just, it keeps you so invigorated and and it places so much power in terms of what you're doing because people are discovering it for the first time. And it's just so fresh and there's all that new energy and there's all that, all that just youth, you know, like, like intertwined in, in with it all. So, yeah, I mean, I, I absolutely love it. Absolutely. 100%. So would you say that you actually get a pretty good, you know, response from younger people as compared to like the older generation or is it kind of a mixed bag? Oh yeah. I don't really think the older generation likes us at all. I think they, they've made up their mind about us years ago. Um, and, and, and I'm not even speculating when I, when I talk about, or when I talk like that, because a little inside baseball, I mean, we have a publicist, we have a great, great publicist, publicist tag media, and they service weekly press releases on us, just like they do Slipknot or system of a down or five figure death punch or whatever. And they've had big clients in the past and they have access to all the, the big major websites like everybody else. But the big major websites refuse to post any news about us. It doesn't matter how newsworthy it is. And the basic 
general consensus is that they're a bit older there and they remember us from back in the day. And we don't place on that hierarchy in terms of being considered a legitimate band to report news on. And we just get that a lot from everybody in that from that are, that is working in those establishments because they're more around our age or within the 10 year, 10 year you know, range of us. And we just know, we just know what it is. We just don't get a lot of love. It's the same thing. If you go look at my Facebook, which is all old people, you know, it's like, if you look at, I post something and I'll get a hundred views <laughs> or three likes on something. And then you go over to TikTok and just two weeks ago, I have a clip up there that's up to 170,000 and like 5,000 saves and 10,000 likes, you know what I mean? But it kind of surprises me that you say like bigger, you know, news sources don't really think that you're newsworthy per se. I mean, like, I'm pretty sure you even have like your own wiki page. Like you're big enough to have a wiki page, right? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, you've, I mean, you've broken look, records. Agree. Yeah. I don't, I don't agree with it, but they're just, they're going to do what they're going to do. I mean, Look, hey, we just, I do not agree with traditional media. And that's why I do not work for any traditional media companies. Yeah. And I work for myself. It, it, it is what it is. You know, like, like this last press release that we just had go out, it was about the fact that we had a clip on TikTok go over 1 million. And just two weeks ago, Maynard from Tool was on Joe Rogan talking about how um, he wouldn't do well in the TikTok crowd, but he doesn't have to worry about it because all his fans are embedded and they're obviously older and Tool's a great band. He's a phenomenal singer, but he's just like, oh yeah, you know, I don't even get involved with TikTok because it, we wouldn't do well. Okay. So that's newsworthy. Now here's an old band that comes along and is doing very well with over a million hits on one clip, but that's not newsworthy, you know, to all the, the, the established media in terms of, you know, the larger rock sites. I don't agree with it, but it, it it's just it's just the way that they they look at us. And it's unfortunate because they used to post about us. And then somewhere along the lines, they said, oh, society one isn't relevant anymore. And it doesn't matter what we do or, or how we prove that we are. They just they won't see it like you would think that a band that can get like I think we're up to one million one hundred thousand hits for that one clip on TikTok. That's newsworthy. That's a million people in under four weeks seeing us. You would think that being on tour with Static X and Fear Factory for a month is newsworthy. All, all the big sites post about them being on tour, but yet when we say that we're going on that same tour, no, it's it's not it's not newsworthy. So I mean, it's just it's it's just the way that it is. It's just the way that they think about us. And you know, what are you what are you going to do? I mean, ultimately, does it really matter anymore when every couple of weeks we get a clip to go over hundred thousand people on TikTok? I would argue to say that it doesn't really hold any weight anymore, like for us, because we have that ability to not get 10, 20, 30, 40, like every three weeks, two, three weeks, we hit a clip that hits over a hundred thousand. I'll take that any day over being on Blabbermouth. You have a whole movie coming out. I'm surprised that that isn't something that one, you know, a lot of these news places want to report on. Um, which I mean, all the better because if I can get all the exclusive information, I'm fine with that. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the next trailer, we're releasing seven and a half minutes of the movie. I actually shared that with you prior to this interview. Um, that gets released out to the press and to the media next week and we'll see how it goes. I mean, again, at the, at that point, are they going to look at the fact that they're actually making a movie about us and you can see seven and a half minutes of it and they're going to say, oh, no, this isn't newsworthy. This has no worth. Do, do you know what I mean? Like at that point, I mean, what else are you going to do? OK, I can get you want to ignore our, our new single or our new video. Maybe you want to ignore the tour. Maybe you want to ignore the fact that we got over a million clips on TikTok. But now you're going to ignore a movie, an actual real movie like with they the production won't, they won't because it's like if you think of the dirt and what it did for motley crew and like let's be honest like they've been kind of out of the limelight for decades um and it wasn't until the dirt came out that like they kind of became popular again i was just at walmart yesterday and some person my age was wearing a motley crew t-shirt you know yeah. um so I think by having a movie and I, what platforms is it going to come out on? We're working with a specific producer that is going to be shopping it to a larger production company after next week. And then we're going to be announcing uh, who they get it picked up by. But okay. right now, so it, like it's such uh, and it's in infant stages. I mean, like you are one of the first people 
to see it that just those seven and a half minutes. And I only shared it with you because I knew we were doing this interview and I didn't want the interview to come out and then the movie trailer to come out and, and people be like, why didn't you talk about this? You know, so <laughs> right. um, yeah, it, that still remains to be seen, but I'm sure that somebody's going to pick it up. I mean, you've seen the trailer. Does it seem interesting to you? Does it have enough big enough stars in it? You know? I mean, I definitely believe that, but again, it's like, who knows what these other companies are going to decide. I'm not, I'm not too worried about it because everything is just so exciting and there's so much going on right now. And I, I personally really like what, what's been done so far with it. So just going to wait and see, we'll see who talks about it, who doesn't and whether or not they talk about it doesn't matter to me again, because once that gets picked up and it goes beyond and around the music industry and it just goes into the film industry, I'm not going to need them anyways. Eventually they're going to have to either talk about it or it's just, it, it, or not, it still won't matter because it's, it's, it, they're not going to be able to stop the, the information about it getting out there when it proliferates through the movie making media aspect right. side of it. And so far, everybody that I've talked to over on that side, they don't care. They don't care what these other people say. They're like, wow, this is really interesting. Like, let's talk, let's have a meeting, let's see what happens, you know? So we'll we'll see what happens with it and i just i'm so excited for people to see that those seven and a half minutes because it really it really starts to lay it all out there you know what i mean like like you saw i mean what would you think of it i mean i think it's really exciting and it definitely left me wanting to finish you know watching the rest of it and and seeing what else everybody has to say um regarding shock rock i mean it is a very interesting topic that is not something that you see so much today. So for younger people like me, it's, it's so interesting and, you know, just kind of makes you want to go back in time and actually see it for yourself. Well, so that's this is great. Point. You know, so you're now people be are able, able to, to go see, see us on tour, you know, and yeah. that, that's, that's what we're trying to bring to people. And again, uh, to the best of our ability in terms of what we're going to be allowed to do without getting kicked off or in jail after the first show.